Good morning, students. Once again, we are here to look at another topic which is very, very important in your course of study. This time around, we are looking at principles of cost accounting. Principles of cost accounting. And the topic is costing methods two. Contract costing. Contract costing. So we are going to look at what contract costing is. If you look at what I'm also seeing here, a contract is a type of job whose execution spreads over a longer period of time. And therefore, contract costing is a type of costing method where work is undertaken according to the customer's special requirement with relatively long duration usually more than one accounting period, and is undertaken outside the premises of the producer, who is otherwise called the contractor. It can be applied in the construction of roads, bridges, estate development, etc., etc. In other words, it is the determination of the cost of and profit on work done to the customer's description, which is of comparatively large size, long duration and is done outside the premises of the factory or the premises of the business enterprise. Okay, so we are going to look at the problems that you are going to, you are bound to encounter when you are trying to prepare contract costing. The first one is the duration. For example, if you want to embark on a project, you cannot tell. Though you put it on paper, I will complete this pro project by nine months time, but so many things can, can happen, and then it will either as it will be extended to maybe two years or more. The second one is how to take profit while the work is not yet completed. You are still working. How are you going to take some profits so that you can look after your family? That is a problem. And the last but not the least is how to value uncompleted contracts. How to value uncompleted contracts. Okay, so we are going to look at types of contract accounts. We have one type, which is an account that is prepared for contracts that are started and completed within the same accounting year. If you are in a popular school, look at the building that uh, the current government, Nana Kufuado and his government, had put up uh, around the Atamos area. You see, they started it in around February and they finished it around September. So that is a contract that is started and completed within one accounting period. If I say accounting period, normally it is one year, 12 months. So if you start a contract and finish or complete within 12 months, then it is a contract that is started and completed within the same Accounting period. And the second one is a contract account for contracts that are not completed at the end of the accounting period. If you look at the Kufo block, it was a contract started about 15 years ago. Still, we have not completed it. So that is an example. I'm giving you a living example. Good. So we first we have to look at contracts that are started and completed within the same accounting period. What you have to do? One, you have to open account for that contract. Open account for that contract. And if you open account for that contract, you debit all cost that you have to incur in that contract. You have, I talk of cost. Cost of materials, cost of machines, cost of labor, everything. You debit all of them to that contract account. And then you credit materials, plants, and others. That will be, will be that you have at the close of the period. That is the accounting period. So you may have maybe you bring about hundred bags of cement. At the end of the accounting period, you have about fifty bags. Then you credit that one. The cost of plants that you used at the end of the period. You value it, and then the cost or the value you credit 
the quarter's account. So that is what you, you have to do. And the next one is that you debit uh, the head office overheads tied to the co contract. There are some overheads or costs that will come from the head office. That one too is debited to the contract account. And also you come you credit the contract price to the contract account. The last but not the least is for you to transfer the balance on the contract account after making the above entries representing the profit or loss to the profit and loss on contract account. Good. Then this is the format of a contract that is started and completed within the accounting period. So as I've already told you, the debit side, you have material sent to site, wages paid and wages accrued, hire of plant, subcontract cost, overhead, plans sent to site, and then you look at the profit. And on the credit side, you have materials returned from site, value of plant returned, contract price. So if you compare the debit side and the credit side, it will give you either a profit or a loss. And we have another account which is called the contractee's account. The contractee's account. The contractee's account is the account of the person, organization or body that awarded the contract. So, example, with the one that was built recently, that we have written, the Nakufado's block in front of it, it is a contract awarded by the government. So here the contractee is the government. The contractee is the government. So the person who is doing the work is the contractor. And the person who is giving the work for somebody to execute is the contractee. And the next one is, as soon as the contract is completed, the contractee, body or person who employed the services of the contractor becomes indebted to the contractor in respect of the contract price until when he has paid it. So when before the contractor comes to site, you agree with him or her how much you are going to pay for the contract until you pay the amount, then the contractee will be indebted to the contractor. And this is the contractee's account. The debit side, you record the value of the contract. And then the credit side, the cash that you have paid to the contractor. And this is characteristics of contract custom. If you are asked, uh, what can tell you this is contract custom, but not another form of custom? Contract custom has the underlisted characteristics. One, it is used on lifestyle and long term jobs, which are always site based. Contracts that will travel more than about six months and above. And also the work is not done in the premises. Because if you are given a contract to construct a road, you cannot construct the road in your factory and then you bring the road and then you put it outside. We don't do it that, that, that way. You can't build the building in your factory premises and then you bring it outside and put it on the land where you are supposed to build. So work is undertaken outside the premises of the business. And production units are of higher value. There is always an advanced determination of the value of the contract. Before the contract is started, they can cost the contract. This will cost the government or it will cost me as the con contractee, an individual con contractee, so and so amount. It can be de determined in that way. And contract costs are mostly treated as direct costs as they are incurred solely because of the existence of the said co co contract. Indirect costs are reduced to the barest minimum with less cost apportionment problems because all the costs that is being incurred are costs that are being incurred because of the existence of that particular contract. So that is that. And the next one, progress payments are made on the basis of the work certified, less retentions agreed upon. We talk of progress payments. When you are working, somebody who is an architect will come and value the work that you have done. 
and then will tell the contractee, this is what you have done, and this is what you have to be paid. So we have progress payment, that is pro payment that they make uh, period by period. And then they subtract what is called retentions. We will come to that in our, uh, when we move over. We will come to the meaning of retentions at, uh, I'm talking about right, right now. There is an advanced estimation of the cost of the contract. Also, contracts are always executed to customers' special requirements and are used in road construction, bridges, plant installations, dam construction, etc., etc. And so that is the characteristics of contract. And we are looking at purpose of contract custom. Uh, the main purpose is for you to calculate the cost, to know the profit or loss that you will make on any co 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 contract. So these are the purpose of contract co costing. To know the cost of the contract and also whether you make a profit or loss. So this is illustration. Illustration one. Illustration one. We are going to look at that and then this is an illustration and a, a contract that is started and completed within the accounting period. So contract number 227. It's for the construction of a rural bank premises for Jetokro, work began on 1st of January 1996 and was scheduled for completion by 31st December 1996. The price of the contract was 28 million Ghana CDs. Work was completed on schedule and as at 31st December 1996, the following cost had been recorded against the contract. Material sent to site, 10 million Ghana CDs. Wages paid aside, 3 million. Plant sent to site, 6 million. Overheads charged by head office, 1 million. Okay, there was a 2 million of materials unused aside, and this was returned to business. The value of plant returned from site was also 4 million. You are required, you are required, not me. You are required to A, prepare a contract account in respect of the co contract and also the contractee's account. So I want you to go over and look at the format. As I showed you earlier on, you debit all the cost of the contract and if there are materials or the, the plant is not exhausted by the, the cost of the, the value of the plant and then all the contract, you credit them and then you debit all cost to the co contract. So let's look at the suggested solution. So here you see we have debited all the cost as given in the question. And as we were told, the materials that were left after the contract, the value of the plant after the contract, and then the contract price. So if you do that, you see that this side, the credit side, will be more than the debit side. And so what you make up to make the debit and the credit agree is your profit. Is your pro profit. And the contractee's account, the value of the contract is 28 million. And the cash paid was 28 million. So that is that. For contracts started and completed within the accounting period. So we are going to look at the B. Costing of uncompleted contracts at the end of the accounting period. Here, not all contracts are started and completed just within one accounting period. When it happens like that, the preparation of the contract account will differ from what we have just seen. So let us now consider some terms under costing of uncompleted contracts at the end of the accounting period. The first one is the architect certificate. You come across architect certificate. What is the architect certificate? It is the value of the architect certificate which represents the sale value of the contract to date, which is credited to the contract account in place of the contract price. The architect certificate is issued by the contractee's architect or surveyor who makes periodic assessment of the project to ascertain the work so far done and therefore the amount of money due to the contractor 
in accordance with the terms of the contract. So that is the architect's certificate. And then we look at the next one, cost of work not certified. Cost of work not certified. This refers to the cost of work done between the date that the architect issues his certificate and the accounting year end of the business. The architect inspects the work done periodically, but this may not coincide with the accounting year of the business enterprises. In most cases, the work will be inspected a number of months before the accounting year end of the business. So in contract costing, profit is taken or found only on work certified. Therefore, the architect values the work done some time before the accounting year ends. When the business prepares its profits and loss account, the cost of work done from the, that date, the certificate was issued to the end of the business year, must be ascertained and deducted from the total work charged or debited to the contract. Such a deduction can be simply made by crediting the contract account with the cost of work done but not certified. With this deduction made, the cost of work left is in respect of only the work certified and this is deducted from or compared with the value of work certified to obtain the profit or loss on work certified. Retention money. When I was doing the explanation uh, just now, I promise you I'll come to retention money and give you the proper explanation so that you understand what we mean by retention money. This is the money payable to the contractor but kept by the contractor who he, the contractor, may lose if he fails to complete contract or put right a defective part of it. The purpose of the retention money is to compel the contractor to finish the work or put right any defect discovered before completing or in a reasonable time after completing the contract. When the question is silent on the percentage of retention money, the retention is taken to be the difference between the architect's certificate and then the cash or the progress payment received. So, retention money, if you enter into contact with a contractor and you are to pay the person, say, 10,000 Ghana cities when the work is done, if you pay everything, if later on you find out that there are some defects, there are some cracks, faulty electrical works, plumbing works, and then you cannot call him to come and work. So you take some money out of the main contract amount and put it aside so that when he finishes the work and then you go around, inspect, and then you are satisfied that everything is okay, then you give back that money. Normally, it is given in the percentages. But as I've told you, if it's not given in percentages, then it is between it is the difference between the architect's certificate and then the cash received from the contractee. Then we look at the cash received. This represents the value of architect's certificate less retention money. So if the certificate of the architect is say 10,000 and then the contractor is, uh, the retention is 2,000 and then the cash received will be 10,000 less 2,000. So it will be 8,000. So that is cash received, the one that you get from the contractee. Based on the, uh, uh, based on the, uh, the findings of the architect. It is also called or known as progress payment. Progress payment. Okay, then we look at apparent profit. Apparent profit. Apparent profit is also known as notional profit. And it is the value of work certified less the cost of the contract to date. Net of materials, plant and other expenses, unused, and uh, the cost of work done, but not yet certified. In other words, the apparent profit represents the difference between the debit side and the credit side of the contract account. 
The apparent profit is made up of profit taking and then profit in suspense. If you take the apparent profit, it is made up of profit taking and profit in suspense. So let's look at what is profit taking. Profit taking. It is a fraction of the profit made on an uncompleted contract reserved as unusable or distributable profit. Usable or distributable profit. It will be quiet, unreasonable, or even unsafe to take credit of the total profit made on an uncompleted contract. This is because of the fact that since the contract is not completed, an unforeseen event may occur which may necessitate making further expenses on the work on which profit has already been taken, meaning that the unrealized profit has been used up, thereby reducing capital, signifying an overstated profit. So, to avoid overstatement of profit and the consumption of capital through the use of an unrealized profit, just a proportion of the profit made on the uncompleted contract is regarded usable. The profit taken is calculated by using the following formula. To test times apparent profit times cash received over value of work certified. The profit taken is debited to the contract account and credited to the profit and loss on contract. I want to go over this one. Profit taken. All that I'm trying to tell you is that since you are to build or you are to execute a contract which may transcend over several years, you cannot say, oh, if I finish, I'll get this profit. So now I'm taking this profit out. If you do that, when something happens in future, it's going to affect the co co contract. So there is a formula you have to use so that you can take a profit out of the work that you have done. So that the, some of the pro profit will remain till you complete the work and then you take all your profit. So the formula is, you look at two tests of apparent profit of cash received and then the value over the value of work certified. And then as I told you, I have told, I have told you that profit, apparent profit is made up of profit taking and profit in suspense. So when you have taken profit out of the apparent profit, what is remained is the profit in suspense. So this is the profit reserved to meet future unexpected expense on work done, on which profit has been taken. It safeguards against distribution or expenditure of profit which has not been realized. In other words, profit in suspense is the difference between the apparent profit and the profit taken. It is debited to the contract account and credited to the profit in suspense account. So if you get your apparent profit and then you take the profit that you can take before the contract is completed, the profit that is left is the profit in suspense. The profit in suspense. So this is a format for a contract that is started but not completed within the same accounting period. I'll give you an example of the Kofor block. There is another block here, just opposite the ICT center. That is an example of a contract started but not completed with the accounting period. And I also gave you the one completed with the accounting period, the Ekufad block. It was used about seven months or six months to complete that work. That is a contract started and completed with the same accounting period. So this is a four format. As usual, you debit all the cost to the contract. That's the first part. You debit all the cost to the co contract. And then you credit all the materials at the end of the contract, the value of plant at the end of the contract. If there are some prepayment that you have made, paying up and above what you should have paid is prepayment. Pre and then cost of work not certified. If you do that, the difference will give you cost of work certified. Cost of work certified. That will be given to you. But the difference will give you the cost of work not certified. 
So when you come to the second part, the cost of work certified carried down here, you bring it down here as cost of work brought, not certified, cost of work certified brought down. And then you also credit the value of work certified. And the difference between the two, the value of work certified and the cost of work certified gives you the apparent profit carried down. And then on the next segment, you bring it down here and then you divide it into profit taking and profit in suspense. So you use the formula to test of apparent profit of cash received over value of work certified to get the profit taking. And the difference between the profit taking and the apparent profit will give you the profit in suspense. And then when you finish, the last segment is for you to bring the remaining materials, the value of plant left at the end of the contract, at the end of the period, and then the prepayment brought down, and the cost of work not certified. If you do that, then uh, you are filling the contract account. And you see, I've made some asterisks here. This is always the difference between the debit side and the credit side of the contract account. When it is brought down, the difference between it and the value of work certified gives the apparent profit. This one, you bring it here, and then you record the value of work certified here. So the difference between the two, this one and this one, gives you the apparent profit, which is or which consists of the profit taking and profit in suspense. So we are going to look at uh, another illustration. Another illustration, which is going to uh, show you how to answer questions on contracts that is started but not completed in the same accounting year. So this is an illustration. Prepare a contract account for the following data related to Paparazzi Limited, a construction firm. So these are the figures for you. So you look at it and then you go... Okay, so this is a suggested solution. If you have you have been following what I've told you so far, you debit all the cost to the contract. The question will give you the materials left at the end of the contract. You credit them. If there's any prepayment, you credit. The cost of work certified, you credit. And the difference will give you the cost, the work not certified. And so you bring the cost of work certified here, and this is the value of work certified by the architect. So the difference between this one and that one gives you the apparent profit, which is 11,130. 11, so you balance your account. You are all accounting students, so you know. You balance your account, and then uh, you bring the apparent profit carried down. You bring it here. That is the third segment. And then we are going to segregate this one into profit taking and profit in suspense. So with the profit taking, you have to use the formula to get that one. When you get to the next slide, I'll show you. And the difference between what you have gotten as the profit taking and the apparent profit gives you the profit in suspense. And so you close, you, 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 uh, Balance your account 11 130, 11 130, and then the balances here the balances uh, carried down for plant and materials prepayment work not certified. You bring them here for the next period to continue. So that's what you have to do. We are going to look at how we had the uh, uh, profit taking of 6678. So this is a calculation of profit taking. The formula is to test of apparent profit times cash received over value of work certified. So the, where the cash received is value of work certified less the 10% retention, as I've already to, to told you. So the 100 million, 10% will give you 10 million, subtract from this one. So this 90 million will represent the cash received. And therefore, the profit taken 
as we are going to use this formula, will be two thirds of the apparent profit of 11 million 130,000 times the cash received of this one over the value of what certified, which is 100 million. If you calculate, you see your cal calculators, you get six, six, six million, six hundred seventy-eight thousand to be the profit taking. And so, if you go back, if you go back here, this is a six, six, seven, eight. We are working in thousands because of space. That's the reason why I didn't bring six, six, seven, eight, zero, zero, zero. We are working in thousands. That's why we have the Ghana City zero, zero, zero on top. So if you take this one from the 11,130, you get this one. And this one is the 4452 is the profit in suspense. The profit that is waiting before the contract is completed. So that is how you get your profit taking. And the profit in suspense is the difference between the apparent profit and the profit taking. So it is 11,000, 11,130,000. You take in, you take out six six seven eight, which is the profit taking, and you get your uh, profit in suspense of four million four hundred and fifty two thousand. So, students, this brings us to the end of what you are to do to, to today. So, to tell me you have understood what I have just taught you, this is an exercise for you. I'm giving you two exercises. One, th these are all wasi questions and you can answer if you have followed what i've told you to today this is the ajogolo question and there's an, another one uh huh. top construction they are all past wasi questions so if you have any difficulty don't shy away just call my number 0244 622 840 and teacher kofi will just come to your aid. So, until we meet another time, this is also some questions on theory. Theory. What's the questions? Theory. For you. Just ask what I've told you. If you read this, if you read them, you can answer all, all these questions. So, uh, that brings us to the end of our topic for today. I thank you very much for being around. This is your regular host, Teacher Kofi. Thank you, and God bless you.